Praise the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and grace and peace to everybody viewing Bible Christians today on YouTube. The title of today's lesson is called, Not the Rapture, But the First Resurrection. Not the Rapture, But the First Resurrection. We're going to start off in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 because we believe that the Bible tells us everything we need to know. And it's a doctrine out there talking about the rapture, that the Lord's going to come back and rapture the church either before tribulation or after tribulation. But we're going to show you in the Bible that the Bible does not support the rapture at all. So we're going to start off in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 17. When you get there, go ahead. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now this is a scripture that people use to justify the rapture. And it says, and then we shall be caught up alive together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Now because of this one verse is where they base their entire doctrine on about the rapture. But we're going to show you that it's not the rapture, but this is talking about the first resurrection. So we're going to go all the way back to Ecclesiastes and show that it's one event that must happen to everybody. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and we'll read verses 2 and 3. Because remember, the rapture doctrine is not supported in the Bible. But we're going to show you through the scripture that this verse is talking about the first resurrection. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, I'm going to read verses 2 and 3 because there's one event that's going to happen to everybody. No matter who you are, no matter how righteous you are, this event is put upon everybody because all have sin. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 2 and 3, when you get there, go ahead. All things come alike to all. Uh -huh. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked. All right, there's one event to the righteous and to the wicked. No matter how righteous you are, no matter how wicked you are, everybody has to cross, come to this event. And what's that? Go ahead. To the good and to the clean. Uh -huh. And to the unclean. Uh -huh. To him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. So even if you're very religious or if you're not religious, it's still one event. Go ahead. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. Uh -huh. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. That there is one event unto all. Uh -huh. Yea, also the heart of the sons of man is full of evil and madness. is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. So, you're going to live your life. No matter how you live your life, whether you're righteous or whether you're wicked, after you live your life, you're going to come to the dead. Now, let's go to, to Job chapter 14. Now, the question is, once a man died, what's after that? What's after that? Is there anything else? Is your life over? Is, is that the end of your story? Or is there more? Job chapter 14, and we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Because Job is going to answer this question. Because everybody has to die. The wages of sin is death. Since all have sinned, all have the first death coming. Ecclesiastes, I mean, Job chapter 14, and read verse 14. When you get there, go ahead. If a man dies, shall he live again? Now that's the question. Once you die, shall you live again? Go ahead. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. Now look what Job said. He asked a question. If a man die, shall he live again? And it says, all the time shall he wait until his change come. Go ahead. Thou shalt call and I will answer thee. Uh -huh. Thou will have a desire to the work of thine hands. For now thou numbers my steps. Does thou not watch over my sin? All right, now notice it says, Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to do the work in thy hands. In St. John chapter 5, it says, Marvel not, for the hour is coming, that those who are in the grave shall hear his voice. And that's the time that Job was talking about. But we're going to focus on something else. Flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, Shall a man die, shall he live again? All the days will I wait until my point in time Come until my change come. Verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Now, let's see how long he's going to wait until this change come. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And remember, all must come to the point where they have to die. Why is your wicked? Then you're going to wait until that change come. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 53. When you get there, go ahead. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, this is that same thing that Job was talking about. He said, we shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. 
Go ahead, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, notice what he said here. Job said, if a man dies, shall he live again? He's going to wait until that appointed time when his change comes. But when is his appointed time? At that seventh trumpet. When that trumpet is blown, the dead shall arise, and we shall be changed. That's the change he is speaking of. Go to Revel. Um, you finish that. Mm -hmm. Go to Revelation chapter eleven, oh, fifty-three. I'll oh, go ahead. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So at the seventh trump, the dead in Christ are going to be raised, and their change is going to come, and they're going to get a brand new body. They're going to get that spiritual body. They're going to be get that celestial body, that body that lives forever. But you're going to wait until that time comes, not until the trumpet sounds. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 11. Flip over to the last book of the Bible and let's see what happens at that seven trumpet. Because if we're going to understand the first resurrection, we're going to understand 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, we need to understand the whole picture. <coughs> you just can't take one scripture and base the entire doctrine on that one scripture. Revelation chapter 11, and we're going to start at verse 15. When you get there, go ahead. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall be reigned forever and ever. Now notice it said, the seven angels sounded. What seven angels sounded? The angel with the seven trumpet. Because the Lord going to have seven trumpets blown. Each time one trumpet is blown, an event is going to happen. But when the seven angel sounded, and it says, And there was a voice in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. That signals the second coming of Christ. Jump down to verse 18. This is also what's happening at the seventh trumpet. Go ahead. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged. Now notice that, what it says here. It says, and the nations were angry, that thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they shall be judged. Now we read in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, at the sound of the trumpet, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's the time of the dead when they shall be judged at the seventh trumpet. Go ahead, and that's when you get that spiritual body, and that's when you get your change. That's the appointed time that Job was talking about. Go ahead. And the nations were angry that in thy wrath is come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Now notice there, the reward unto the prophets, what's that? That's the resurrection. That's that first resurrection. Flip over to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, and we're going to start reading at verse 4. Now this is at the seventh trumpet. Go ahead. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Uh -huh. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, uh -huh. or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Uh -huh. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. And what time did that happen? At that seventh trump. This is the first resurrection. This is when Job's going to get his change. This is when the dead that follow Christ are going to be raised incorruptible. And those that are still alive are going to be raised incorruptible at this time. If you follow Christ. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second that have no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. Alright, now let's go back to 1 Thessalonians. And we're going to look at the entire picture. Now that we can make sense of what this verse is talking about. It's not talking about a rapture. But it's talking about the first resurrection. First. Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're going to go back to verse 13, and we're going to read down to verse 17, so we can get the whole picture of what this scripture is talking about. Remember, it's not a rapture. When you get there, go ahead. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, uh -huh. that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now it says concerning them which are asleep, talking about those that are passed away, those that die. That's what this scripture is talking about. Go ahead. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Uh -huh. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Uh -huh. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the death in Christ shall rise first. All right, there go that trump of God. That's the seventh trumpet. When the seventh trumpet is blown, the king of this world, I become the king of our Lord and of his Christ. And that's the signal for Christ to descend from heaven. Because remember it said, Christ shall descend, meaning Christ is on his way down. And at the seventh trumpet, that's when the dead shall rise first. So Christ is on his way down, and the dead is rising first, and those that are alive are rising first to meet Christ in the air. And Christ is descending and those are resurrection, meaning Christ at the air. This happens at the seventh trumpet. This is the first resurrection, not the rapture. The rapture don't exist. I mean, go ahead. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now it says we which are alive, so the dead and the alive at this time shall meet the Lord in the air as he descended. And remember, Christ is going to keep coming down. They're going to get their change to their spiritual body. The first resurrection, the time of the dead is going to take place, and they shall be judged. All this is happening at the seventh trumpet. This is the first resurrection. Let's go to um, go ahead and read verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now it says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Remember in Revelation chapter 20, it says that we shall reign with Christ for a thousand years to be his kings and his priests. But where are we going to reign at? Go to um, Matthew 24 first. Matthew 24. Because we want to clear up something else before we get to that. Matthew 24 and read verse 29. Let's see the time frame when this is going to take place. Because some people preach that the rapture is going to happen before tribulation. Matthew 24 verse 29. Go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So when did this happen? Immediately after tribulation. And let's see what's going to happen, that clear signal, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Just like we read in First Thessalonians, the Lord shall descend with a shout, or descend in the clouds. But 31, go ahead. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. There go that seventh trumpet. Go ahead. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. The first resurrection. Jump down to verse 40 and go ahead. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. One shall be left behind, and the other shall be taken in the first resurrection to meet the Lord in the air. Because remember, Paul said, us that remain unto the lives should not prevent them out of sleep. So after the dead are raised up, then we which are alive and remain and shall be called in the air together with them. One shall be taken, and the other left. The one that's taken is the one that was walking righteously. Go ahead. Verse 41. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. That's the first resurrection. How the living is going to meet the Lord in there also. Now remember it says, so, oh, so shall we ever be with the Lord? Go to Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14. And let's see where the Lord is landing. Because also the rapture teaches that we're going to be taken back up to heaven. If God is descending, he's descending somewhere. Zechariah 14, verse 1, when you get there, go ahead. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. All right, it's time of the day of the Lord, verse 3. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, uh -huh. and the city shall be taken, uh -huh. and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Verse 4. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Now remember, Jesus is descending. The saints met him in the air, and then he's going to land on Mount Olives, meaning the only way down. Verse 5. 
And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, you shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And that's the first resurrection, not the rapture. I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name.